serve humanity. Now, I'm usually speaking to the crowd that has disabilities. Now, the first judgment in heaven will be based on compassion. We will move from being a nobody to somebody. We all have issues of life. People have come to Disability is part of who she is. We cannot talk about these things without talking about Jesus. Hello, you welcome back here on Wings TV. Here today we are on a workshop on the segment of people with disabilities and our responsibilities organized by Hope for All International here in the heart of Lagos. And I have here the co-founder of this wonderful group. I mean, he's an amazing personality. He's an actor, a scriptwriter, doctorate degree and all that. So I want to meet him one-on-one. -on -one. have here with me Dr. Michael Igwebike. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. How are you? I'm very fine. You look uh, quite amazing. Oh, well, thank you very much. I don't know why you said all this doctor and all those things. <laughs> you don't need to say that, but it's okay. All right, you talking know. about Hope for All International, and what's the brain behind this organization? Well, Hope for Now International, like someone just said now, is hope you are giving to people now. All right. it now is the most important thing, not tomorrow, because people need hope. People need assistance now. So that's the most important thing. That you, so that name was actually coined for the purpose of what we're doing. Right. Hope for now, for giving those who are marginalized, those who are vulnerable in society. So that's really how that concept came, and that's how we set up the foundation. So it's basically for those who are really, really marginalized in society. All right. If people are focusing on the people with disabilities, we have those with cancers and HIV, so why people with disabilities here in Nigeria? Yeah, there are people also who have cancer and all those HIV, like you rightly said. Yeah. It's one form of disability or the other. But as you know, we cannot chase everything. So we, got, we have to narrow what we're focused into. Right now, it's also part of it, because at the end of the day, in Africa, there is just no hope. Okay. In, a count, in a country, as well as Nigeria, in a country of hopelessness, there's just no hope. So we're actually there, catering for theirs, those who have cancer as well. So it's not like we are only here speaking for those who are physical, there are those who have mental disabilities, there are those who have different types of disabilities as well. Those also who are into, um, what is it called, um, you know, alcoholic abuse, substance abuse, it's also part of disability. Yeah. So that's why, so it's this, it's, so that's why I use that general, disability is a general word. It's starting from those who have autism spectrum, all those who have ADHD, it's all part of disability. But whatever it is that affects activities of daily living, that's why we're here. That's why we're here for people who are being stigmatized. That's why we're saying no. And that's why we're having this seminar today, whereby we're trying to bring consciousness to our stakeholders and caregivers in trying to train them okay. on how they can actually become better caregivers for people who have disabilities. Wow, quite amazing. One final question to you. You know, I don't know what gave you the motivation to go into things like this. I mean, this dream you have for quite for a number of years now. And you know, now it's my materialization here in Nigeria. So how long the duration for you to bring this dream to realization today? Oh, that's a, listen, that's a very good question. And I say it because what made me, over the years, I have become contented with life. And, I've been, and I found out that at the end of the day, the reason why we're here in, on this earth, if you go to the Bible, go to Imam, go to Quran, go to whatever, the reason why we're here on earth is for humanity. It's nothing. There's nothing you're going to do. You can build, if you like, go build all the houses you can, build 10, 20 houses. They're not going to affect humanity. I could have used whatever resources I'm making now for humanity to go build 10, 20 houses in Abuja here and there. But you know what? What affects humanity? Helping the next neighbor to lift him or her up to be a better person is more important to me. And that's why all the resources I've been raising over the years, I'm not doing anything with it other than to affect humanity. And that's why I'm trying to tell people that that is the only reward you can get because our Heavenly Father, at the end of the day, is going to ask you, 
what have you done or what did you do to your neighbor? Good afternoon. Please, how you meet you, ma'am? All right, my name is Barista Joy Tukudo. Okay, ma'am, what is your perception when you see a disabled person? All right, I, I think that for everybody that sees someone living with disability, immediately you see that person with disability, their disability should immediately transform in your mind as your responsibility. For example, if you see someone struggling to get into a bus because of one form of disability or the other, you should immediately take it up on yourself as your responsibility to help that person get into the bus. Or someone that is trying to cross a gutter or any obstacle because the person is blind or partially blind, that partial blindness or blindness becomes your responsibility by leading the other person in the hand to give help as at that moment. So for that moment, that person's disability transforms into your own responsibility. Well, I think the, the vision and, 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 and the mission of Hope for Now International. I should team it. Just tell me the hope and the vision of this foundation. All right, putting a smile on people's faces for the moment. Hmm. As per giving them hope to live for the moment, many people commit suicide. Many people give up on life. Many people think it is over just because of what they're going through for that moment. You cannot start talking to somebody about what will happen tomorrow when the person have not eaten today. You can't start talking to a mother about how the children will take care of her in the future when she cannot live with the fact that her children have not had breakfast to eat. So it's all about the moment, putting a smile on somebody's face to be able to wait for tomorrow. Hello guys, welcome back here. We're still having a lot of discussion here with Igress Personality here with me with Hope For Now International. This is a very big foundation being organized by a very big personality here in Nigeria, the person of Dr. Michael Iwebiki, and also have a doctor here who came to support what he is doing today. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can we meet you, sir? Yes, my name is uh, Dr. Paul Abolo. I am the president of Eco Logistics. We are in the climate uh, in the climate change arena and then we are also involved in the social sustainability all right looking at people with disability in nigeria you know that's the way we see them like an eyesore we just disregard them not to see them close to us so what do you think we need to do in nigeria to be them closer to us um, first of all what we are doing here today is one of the things we need to do we need to create awareness and we need to create that right mindset that will help us to relate with these people in the proper way Amazing. So let's call, let me just shift a little bit to the government. What area do you think they should come in? Because if you, go, if you look into power, those in power, those in politics, those that are working, they are not there. But they are human beings, they are part of the workforce we need to have here in Nigeria. So in what way do you think that the government ought to come in to fuse them in into the power? You know, um, if you listen very carefully to um, the text that was given by Dr. Igwebuke Nwese uh, today, he said that we shouldn't focus on the government alone. Okay. And the problems that we have is that we keep thinking government, government. Who is government? We are all part of the government. So we need to start an action. We need to start initiatives. We need to start doing things that the government will see and the government can leverage on what we are doing to give us the greater help. That's the way I see it, yes. That's quite, like 50-50? Like no. I do my, no. they do theirs. We start, okay. and then they will take off from where we started. But quite, quite years now, we've noticed that the government are not doing nothing about them, because it's just like charity organization, founders go there, take them from the streets, but the government ought to come in. I mean, they're not helping matters either. Um, well, I, don't, I really don't agree with you entirely, because um, the government has a lot of other stuff that they are doing. Okay. Um, Presently, you see what the government is doing with the Empower program, what they are doing with uh, giving out uh, money for people to get involved in, a, in a businesses and entrepreneurship. When the government has done that, it is now left for us to take from the dividends of the empowerment that the government has given unto us to look at our neighbors. These people you are talking to our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors. So we need to show and then we need to draw the attention of the government to what we need. as much as we can 
last year we began, we launched, you know, a program whereby we feed these ones living in disabilities on, you know, two, two months interval. Praise the Lord. We've been doing that, we'll gather them together, we'll talk to them, you know, encourage them, build up their self-esteem, make them to understand that they are not actually the victims of the society, that they are as important as anyone else in the society. And after which we feed them, you know, we give them food in the name of God. Praise the Lord. I want to stress here that the food we give is anointed food. Oh yes, we give anointed food. If you eat the food we give, if you have any ailment, the ailment will go. Praise the Lord. Yes, because we are not doing jamboree, we are coming in the name of God. And so we do that, we did that first in September, we did another one in November. So I want us to count ourselves privileged to be in this seminar today, to be privileged to learn on how to serve humanity, on how to leave a legacy that counts. Many people, they do all sorts of things in the name of leaving a legacy. If you look at it, it's actually materialistic, it's actually full of selfish aggrandizement, it's actually full of things that don't count, that doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. When you begin to live for others, that is when your life begins to count. Anytime you live, you eat, you remember that there are people that the crumbs you leave after eating is, there, is an answer to their prayer. Anytime you start living with that consciousness, your life has just begun. My desire is that after this seminar, our spirit man will be awakened to that consciousness in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, to make, you know, straight to the point, the reason why we are here, we are going to show a video. We are going to show a video I hope for now, I want us to pay attention closely to this video. I want us to understand this video. Video It has a lesson for you and I. After that video, we will continue with the seminar. I also want to tell you, don't be in a hurry to go. Today is loaded. Today is for you and I. After this seminar here today, we are going to march down to a gun to bus stop. Gondo BRT are going to go there. The people with disabilities are there already waiting for us. So we're going to go there and we're going to feed them. Praise the Lord. I count the privilege each time we have the opportunity to do that. So this afternoon, we're going to have the opportunity to do that. So don't be in a hurry to go. Make sure you are part of this historical event today. And God will record it in your credit in Jesus' name. And so we are going to show this video right now. I want you to pay attention, understand this video. God will bless us real good. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. There are outreach in the U.S. and Africa, including medical missions and general charity works for the needy. Dr. Messi imbibes in the words of Martin Luther King Jr. that says, Our lives begin and end the day we become silent about the things that matter. Ikobike believes very strongly in the mantra, Do good no matter what. Give to those who cannot give back to you. In his words, the reason we are here on earth is to serve humanity. The vision of Hope for Now International is to enhance, ensure that all people with disabilities will have an opportunity to live a quality life. Put your hands together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I want to invite to the podium no other person but the president of Hope for Now International. Just like I've heard the Bible, I've read out. Please help me make welcome our own dear brother, our own dear very brother, and our own, 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 own very, very brother, my boss. I welcome you, sir, Dr. Michael Ibebite. Yes, Thank you, sir. You know, um, it's so wonderful to be here. Amen? Amen. So wonderful to be here. 
they let me put every. I saw when uh, Pastor Mega asked the question to the women about what would you do if it's your son. Amen. That was a, let me tell you the truth. My wife, we have two sons. We thank God. But trust me, she's, uh, of course, part of hope for now. But she's a bigger hope for now than myself. But she tells me every day, since she watched the movie, because I do my writing, the critic it, and uh, they have no control over what I eventually do. Trust me, she still has issues with our first son, Marilyn Greenwood. Amen? Amen. She tells me honestly that she doesn't know how she's going to feel. Amen? So for those of you who answer the question, when we launch this um, Hope for Now in July, exactly what the uh, Master of Ceremony did was what you just did. He asked that question and to the audience. And there were people who shared their mind because it was something new. So that's really why we're here. Just honesty, soul searching, looking at how things are, where we are, what we do, how we do things. First of all, I'm going to thank uh, Pastor Emeka and his wife for really putting this together. Especially Pastor Emeka who has been listening to what I'm telling him, how I want us to go. He actually has exceeded my expectation in terms of hope for now, gaining ground. This was actually the reason why we had the second one. Because he exceeded my expectation. And I kept telling him. So I'm really going to spend another two minutes to say that. Because it's true that I, mean, I come from the United States, outside this country. We hear a lot of things, do a lot of things. We don't know what to expect. A lot of people over there, we see a lot of people in, in this country as very dishonest, a lot of things. And I can attest to that because I've been a victim of very dishonest people over the past 20 years. Yes, so I can, you would ask me over that, I, was, I, was, I can say the same thing. But you know, meeting Pastor Maker was a bit different. And I gave, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not asking you to clap hands. <laughs> All right, it's, it's okay that you're clapping hands, okay. But meeting him was, I kept saying something that I'm still saying. This guy keeps exceeding my expectation. I give him something, he exceeds it. You know, over there, we give something for them to come close. I'm very serious. Look at the t-shirts I'm seeing, hope for now, everything. I really didn't tell him to do that. But he conceived it. I have all these things in my head. And he just goes ahead, he puts it together, he understands me so much. It's like I've known him 20 years. Anything I say, he just understands and he goes and he, you know. So I'm very happy that I have found someone who is moving hope for now in the right direction. If I'm looking for a crowd, we'll have a crowd here. You know how I say, I just need people who are doing this charity work for hope for now. I just need to give them more information about how to be caregivers, the compassion that is needed, the temerity in the psychological area that they need to arm themselves in terms of how to pursue. Because what you're doing is humanitarian, but after a while it can be very frustrating. When you look at it, some of you may want a reward right away. Some of you may not be aware that this is an endless job that has no reward. Only God rewards us. Amen? Amen. So I just wanted to, the first concept in December 
And when I spoke to him was, I want to meet with all of you, have a meeting. That's how this thing was begun. See? So the involvement of him having to culminate into this is actually excellent. Amen? Amen. So the video that you just won, the 18 minutes video, I had 18 minutes. This is actually a movie that I shot a year and a half ago towards people with disabilities. I've not released it. Those of you who have seen it here for 18 minutes are the first people to actually see a clip of this movie. It's not been released. But when I did it, 18, 28, 30, 40, I got him involved. But I saw him as a very intelligent, artistic man. We going through it, he felt that 18 minutes was the right one. And it sent a message that we come down on our time. It sent exactly what we we're doing. So I'm, I'm going to start by saying to you, I'm going to dissect for half an hour, 30 minutes on this movie. That's all it's about. I had prepared what I was going to do. For two weeks, I had a standard of what I wanted to talk about. But on Wednesday, I said, you know what, let me watch this 18 minutes. After talking with uh, Pastor Emeka, I think I went to Tuesday on Wednesday. He left, I said, he, oh, he chose the 18 minutes. He said, let me watch it. And when I watched it, the Holy Spirit gave me a different idea. And he said, wow. So everything I've been preparing for three weeks, just said, no, just go there, talk about this movie. What you have shown to them. So I did some PowerPoint and I sent to him. I said, print it out. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to talk for about half an hour. So um, you are likely to, do you have the PowerPoint? Oh, you already put it there. Okay, that's fine. There are maybe times that I will ask you to put the movie part. Are you able to do that? Yeah. If you can do that, that's fine. Switch it to the movie. Right? Switch it to the movie yeah. where she entered the bus. Yeah, that's likely to be the next one. So I'm sure, let me tell you something. Because I do this in schools. So when I go to schools, in the U.S., we also do mentoring, we do some talk. I start out by telling everybody, and it's always like a shock. And I'm actually the one that coined that term for me. When I say to everybody, that everyone on the face of this earth has one form of disability or the other. But I'm usually speaking to the crowd that has disabilities. So I want to keep them at rest. I want to make them feel that they are like everybody else. So when I began to say that, someone asked me that question. And at the end of the day, the person understood where I was coming from. Trust me, I have a disability. You may not see it, but I have one. <laughs> see? Dr. Abolo said my glasses. And he's correct. That's my, that's a disability. This is it. Yeah, there's things you get to in the United States, you can't drive, you know, you have issues. So he just said it. We all have issues of life. That's just the truth of it. All of us. Inside, external. Unfortunately that we have the external ones that is more out there. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So that we avoid discrimination. The more we become disabled. And uh, the meaning of disabled, just straightforward. Your inability to do things that you used to do before, life functions. They say to some of you to run now a hundred miles, just some of you. 
not be able to do that. Or some people have more difficulties doing that. So I'm not going to go into the definition of, um, but this is the issue I want to talk about. And that's why I talked about, Pastor Reagan, I talked about the next area, which is the stigma. Stigma is really all about why we are here. That Amanda faced. How they are viewed by society. Now let's get on the bus. Let's get on the bus. You see, Amanda, if you watch that movie, Amanda was already on the bus. This is a movie that is two and a half to three hours long. It's a very long movie, beautiful movie. You start to watch this movie, you cannot stop. But I condensed certain things for 18 minutes just to make a point. Entering the bus, I want you all to do something here. And that's part of this workshop, this exercise. And this exercise is going to do with what we call a lot of imagination. I want you all to do imagination. Those of you that are part of the stakeholders wearing this uniform, who are doing this workshop, who are, sorry, who are doing this charity work, who are going it elsewhere, including those we have here. This workshop is part of imagination. I want you to imagine how Amanda got on this bus. Someone in a wheelchair. How did someone in a wheelchair get on this bus? The imagination is what I want to lead you to compassion. Amanda is my focus here. How did she get on this bus? Just imagine it from she left home, she entered the bus, she got it here. You know, when I tell people in the United States to imagine, I say to them, close your eyes. Just imagine that you have a crippled yeah, and you have a disability. But when I wrote it here, I said, you know what? If I say it in Nigeria and I tell you to close your eyes and imagine that they are crippled, then we say, God forbid. Amen? <laughs> you see, but over there, when I said, close your eyes, everybody to close their eyes. Big hop. And I said, imagine that you are crippled. Then we imagine it. They are not crippled. But I know I'm in a different environment. So I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes. Amen? So I don't run into trouble here. <laughs> But that's not, the message is for the exercise of what we're doing. Imagination is the key thing. And she's probably she's going to be near. Benin is three, four hours away. She has a disability. And you know that she's not able to use the bathroom when she gets there. What I'm trying to do is the ease all of you take to enter places and you're moving around. Amanda is not able to do that. Amen? And it's something that is very unique. Something you may have observed that is not, that you didn't pick up here, was that there is a long movie. There was only one seat left in the box. Only one space left in the box. Can anybody, I want this interactive. Can anybody tell me why? The seat beside Amanda was the only seat left vacant. Because of the wheelchair. Because of the wheelchair. Okay. Does anybody have anything? Yeah. God had already ordained that the young man will come to Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, Dr. Bolo. Oh, sorry. Okay, bye. There you go, there you go. Next time I'm going to write my script with you. Amen. That's a good one. You see, anything I'm, we're doing, we're planting it. That's, and that's who we are. I'm not saying, I'm not, this, this is not a blame game session. I want all of us to be in tune, speak freely.
freely. When we speak freely, then we begin to adjust. I'm not asking you to change overnight. Just begin to adjust. So tomorrow you look at things differently. She said it right. Everybody that got on, because she must have come in early. You know, people just have to do this early to get on the bus. People who witnessed her get on that bus. No one wanted to sit beside her. That's an isolated tactics that she goes through with her life and she observes it. She knows. She sees it. And as a human being, observing what we are doing. Imagine if somebody just isolates you, avoids, avoids you, and you are there, you're a human being. So that's what that, that, that painted. So, Udo, I painted um, Nduka coming from London on vacation. So I wanted to bring that eyes. So Nduka is on vacation. So exiting the bus, and they, they really chanted. Amanda is an intelligent girl, very intelligent. Extremely very intelligent. And then he blew this guy away, she blew this guy away with her intelligence. Just by them talking, talking about physics, about math. You know, she's right there. So, as they were exiting the bus, most of you saw the shock of what happened. When he saw the wheelchair. When she saw the wheelchair, you can see that subsequent interruption of Unduka with her sister, with his sister and the friend. Unduka is troubled, torn apart on what to do. Unduka is from London. Unduka sometimes knows what to do, knows what, knows what is right or wrong. But you know, Unduka is aware of the system. So, scaling over the home of the system became Munduka's problem. And because Munduka liked her, nobody wanted a relationship, took her number, but seeing her on the wheelchair was very, very challenging. Amen? Amen. So, at the end of the day, Amanda, I know the audio was very bad, was bad. Because Amanda talked to her friend about the guy. And her friend said, well, he hasn't called you. What makes you? Did, did he see the wheelchair? She said, yes. He said, forget about it. What does somebody from London who saw you on the wheelchair want to date you? You understand? That was what that interaction was all about. <clears throat> OK. Go past that, go to here. This is where she's talking about, okay, the problem of the battle that he's having within himself. Go to where she's talking to her friend. Okay. Most of you who saw this, she's excited. Talking to her friend. And her friend just said, forget about it. It's not happening. Then we go to the phone call. You know, most of us, thank you, Pastor Mika. Most of us, and I try to dramatize, when I showed this to a very closed audience in Canada in December, this was one of the things they picked up. That and the bed. You see what you am for if your phone falls, what do you do? God bless you. That's it. But to someone with this level of disability, yeah, let it yeah, with this level of disability. Take a while. So Pastor the maker said it before that the grace of God that we have with us is so much. And having to do these things is unbelievable. The level, I just try to dramatize this, go to the area of the bed whereby the phone is ringing, 
just go and pick up the phone. She's not able to do this. She doesn't have those luxuries. These are part of her disability, but she lives her life because that's who she is. So you can see that the visit of Nduka finally to her was Nduka conquering reason over imagination. Reason is what we consider to be the right thing. Yeah, is that it? The reason is, you can stop it right there. The reason is what we consider to be the right thing to do. Is there anything that Ndoka could have done differently? Does anybody have any idea? So far, Ndoka, by the concept of the disability area, she seems to be doing well, right? Okay, moving right along. I think Ndoka is in the right direction, right? Okay, good. Now, we're going to go over very quickly because I want us to just go through this, then I'll make my final summation. Nduka is very, is one of a kind, but he says something that it's only by the grace of God that we're all alive today. Amen? Amen. Now let's go over to the one that is very critical, which is Nduka's family meeting Amanda. saying so much by using pointers. The wheelchair is the disability that we're using. Amen? There's so many things that have disabilities. People use crutches. People use different types of prosthesis. Like my brother pointed out, the eyeglasses is part of disability as well. But that one is on the lower scale, so we can function very well without it. So it has become normal. But if it gets harder than it is now, we have become disabled. Exactly. That's what it is. It's just that we are still able to function. I have a lady in my office in New York who, without her glasses, she cannot see me. She can't see yet. That's it. I can't even see the wall without her glasses. So when many people are walking around, they're wearing, she wears contact. Does not wear glasses. She wears contact. And she says to me that if she does not put on her contact, she can't see me. That's a serious hide of disability. All around. So you can see that most of us who are here, most of who are here, who actually have some level of disability, could be saved by having things that will improve in their lives. But let's go over to Duka's family meeting Amanda. That's really the critical area here. You saw the senior sister. That senior sister, if you watch that movie, ravaged in this movie. She was just unstoppable. And that senior sister represented a lot like you. A lot. In New York, I want to say something, and I'm not indicting on anything. That lady represents something that I have to listen to. Amen? I may not agree with her, but she represents so much. But I was the one who painted the picture. Amen? See the brother doing certain things. You saw that when they all got in, the first thing she said, who can read that? What's a wheelchair doing in our house? That's a very degrading form. That's if anyone can do anything differently, 
from what she observed. Let me know. She doesn't care who that person is. She sees wheelchair as a no-no in a home. And that's the way most of us are. That's the way we function. That's how we see things. And then you could see Lucas' parents. You see how they were overtaken with shock. Amen? You could see that they could not hide it. They could not hide the shock. Yeah, Pastor Mega, if you have the time, let me have that uh, video. I really want to spend time on this area because that's really where the meat is. I have the video. Thank you very much for that. You, you can see everything is happy, everyone is fine. Everything is fine. Until the wheelchair. There's no problem. The, happy, the home is happy until the wheelchair arrived. No one expects that anyone can come with a disability. You can see that. I know the lights are on. You will not see. Um, but the Rebecca really tried so much with what we have. You can see that the normal video is really, really final and excellent. And um, is there anyone who could have done anything differently at this point? I really want this to be an interactive section. I know everybody's listening. They're looking at this thing so new. But I wrote abomination here because that's what really happens in our system. When we say somebody with a wheelchair. Oh, okay, you want to speak? Yes, I'm asking a question.